Former Home Secretary Suella Braverman has claimed the problem facing Britain and the Tories this week is not Islamophobia. So she said, We need to urgently focus now on the big problem, how to tackle Islamist extremism in the UK. The hysteria in response to those calling out the crisis is one of the reasons why we're not making progress. Now, if you're wondering what exactly she's referring to, well, what's this? Is it Islamophobic? Minister, was it Islamophobic? And Nick, it was wrong. Was what Lee Anderson said Islamophobic? Go on, Minister, yes or no, was it Islamophobic? Well, are you allergic to the words Islamophobic? Islamophobia is rooted in racism. It's Islamophobia. When it comes to Islamophobia... Yeah, I mean, there's a heck of a lot of mention of it, isn't there? And not a huge amount of mention of actual Islamism, which has been a huge problem. And if we all take it right back to the initial point where all of this kicked off, arguably how all of this started. But I'm joined now by Equalities lawyer Eunice Lunat. So, thank you very much for joining us. Great to have you on the show. So, first and foremost, is Suella Braverman right, do you think, that the Tory Islamophobia row has descended into hysteria? Evening, Patrick. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Sorry, I, I yeah. don't know if there's a bit Sorry. of a delay. Is, is it hysteria? Sorry, did you say that again? Is it yeah. delay? I can't hear you properly. Is it hysteria? What is? The Tory Islamophobia row. Um, if it's hysteria, it's been caused by the Tories. Um, it, there seems to be hysteria in the media. It's caused by the Tories. Right, so do you agree then that the people are being overly hysterical about Islamophobia and then ignoring Islamism? Well, not really, no. I don't agree, I don't disagree, I don't really have a view on that. If that's how the Tories want to behave, it's a matter for them. Right, you understand what you're on to talk about though, don't you? Which is why we bucked you, which is to respond Absolutely, to the yeah. government's comments. So do, do you think that Islamophobia sometimes is used maybe as a shield to deflect from Islamism? Can you give me some examples? Yeah, so essentially what they're saying is that at the moment our speaker revealed that MPs were under terrorist threats and those were threats were from people uh, towards MPs from the uh, Islamist section of society and then what's happened is that subsequently we have now seen uh, the comments entirely about Islamophobia and not about that. I, I think could also maybe represented... make a, maybe make a point as well of something that I think you have personal resp uh, a personal involvement with, which was the Batley Grammar School incident, for example, which is that there was an incident there which was deemed to be Islamophobic, where a teacher showed a picture of the Prophet Muhammad to some children, and then what happened was a load of people essentially erupted outside the school gates, and that individual has had to remain uh, in police. Patrick, I, 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 I find it baffling, Patrick. Every time I come on your show. And once a week, at least, your programme has to mention the Batley Grammar School incident. What I think Batley is more famous for is Thomas Mayer. Why do we talk about Thomas Mayer? What he's famous for? That's, that's the root cause of a lot of this. You, you keep mentioning, I'm not here to talk about the Batley Grammar School incident. You're bringing that up. Uh, we, I don't we are, we are here to talk about... To that incident. Sorry, Eunice, I, I am sorry. My role, in that, to... my role in that was bringing that to an end. Right, OK. Um, I am slightly confused as to why you've agreed to come on, because we are obviously well, here to talk about Islamism yeah. and Islamophobia. If you're not going to answer the questions at all, then there's nobody... But what, what, I, what, I, what, I, what, is, what I'm here about is what's the threat to democracy. What is, the, the, is there a threat to democracy? That's what I've been told. Is there, is there what's happening in this instance? Is there a threat to democracy? Now, I think you just misrepresented what the Speaker said in the House of Lords. The Speaker did not say that there was threats of Islamism, there was threats of terrorism, the speaker did say there may have been threats. He did say, he did say, uh, you can let me I don't finish. want there to be another terrorist attack. And yes. then, uh, obviously, the major threat at the moment, as has been evidenced by Prevent, etc., is coming from the Islamist side of things. So that's well, what you, I'm saying you, to you. So I'm just asking you to respond yes. to Suella Bravman's comments, which have made massive headlines today, which yes. is, do you think at times Islamophobia is used as a defence mechanism the, the, to not the, discuss the, the real issue of Islamism? What the, Patrick, what, what MI5 will tell you is the major threat to society today is from far-right... No, terrorism. that's a lie. And, and, and if I mention, if I mention Rogan Stewart, Christopher Ringrose, Marco Pitetsu, will they mean anything to you? 
Yeah, OK. Look, they, that, that's, they, they I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop you there, Eunice, because that's actually factually inaccurate. You know, you're an equalities lawyer. I'm sure that you like to yeah. deal with facts, what's, what's which, is, which is a shame. We, so what's just, factually inaccurate on the day, on the day you have, on just the day, had the review got... into the prevent scheme, which reveals that the overwhelming threat to this country is Islamist extremism. That is a threat that dominates okay, MI5. We've had, we've had... It's a threat that dominates the prevent scheme. Now, we've far right, it might be the fastest growing today. threat, but Islamist extremism, as you well know, is where's, a major threat. Where's the evidence? Where's the evidence? Where's the evidence that the threats to MPs have been made by Muslims or Islamists? Where's the threat? Uh, David the Amos evidence? was stabbed to death. Yes. Uh, Mike Freer has yes. decided that he can't stand it any longer. Uh, so, yeah. so that is that. And I obviously also yes. talked to a huge you, number of MPs as well right. who, who confirmed yeah. that. To me. Right. So that's I'll respond to that, that point. Business. I'll respond to that point, Patrick. I'll respond to that point. Mike Freer had an arson attack on his offices on New Year's Eve. Yes. It's not just the arson and, attack, though, is it? Yeah, no, no, I'll come on to that. And the people that have been charged with the arson attack are called Paul Harwood and Zara Kasubi. Yeah. See, I didn't Muslim. bring up the arson attack, did Muslim. I? Muslim. Yeah. 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 Like... And, 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 the, and, the, and the person that made the threat to his office. Oh. Telephoned it's, three times. It's, all, and it's said also, to it's also, it's also, it's also, you know, and I Phillips. have to stop you there because you know, no, what's the you reason reason to stop you there because it's an active case. It's completely pointless. You've been an absolute disgrace, frankly, coming on. You're not wanting to talk well, about it. You... I don't know why you've waited. Mike Fleer has not been, has not been threatened by Islamists. Eunice, thank you very much. Now,